Hey guys, this is Austin, and today I'm here with a video to see exactly how important a CPU really is for gaming. Now it's really tempting when you're building a new gaming computer to go spend a lot of your budget on a Core i5, however is that really necessary? One of my favorite CPUs right now is the AMD Athlon X4750K. It's essentially just an A105800K with the integrated graphics disabled, however that still means you're getting a quad-core CPU that can clock up to 4 GHz for only 85 bucks. On the other hand, we have the Intel Core i5-4670K. Now this is pretty much the default choice for most gaming PCs, however at $230 it's well over double the price of the Athlon, so is it worth it? To test, I used three graphics cards. First of all, we have the Radeon 7770, which you can find for about $100, and it's a solid entry level card. Moving up to a mid-range card, there's the Radeon 7870, which will set you back about $200. Lastly, for some complete overkill action, we have one of the fastest graphics cards around, a GTX 780, which comes in at $650. To start, let's see how each CPU matches up with a budget Radeon 7770. In the Firestrike benchmark inside 3 Mark, we really don't see much of a difference, with the Core i5 narrowly edging out the Athlon. Battlefield 3 takes this a step further, where the Athlon actually slightly edges out the Core i5, although this is basically inside the margin of error. Metro Last Light, which is not only a very fun game, but also basically a next-gen title, gives a slight edge to the Core i5, but it's clear the graphics card is the bottleneck here as well. Lastly, we have Crisis 3, and this is the same story. You'll lose a couple frames per second with the Athlon, but both CPUs handle it no problem. If you're on a budget, it seems pretty clear that, for almost $150 less, the Athlon 750K is more than enough CPU. However, what happens when we bump this up to a mid-range card? With the Radeon 7870, we start to see a bit more of a difference here in Firestrike, as the Core i5 is able to stretch its legs a bit, but even here we're only looking at an 11% improvement. Going back to Battlefield 3, it's clear that it's hardly CPU bound at all, even with the 7870, as we're back into essentially a tie. Metro Last Light is the first game to really take advantage of that extra CPU power, as here we're looking at about a 30% performance increase. Interestingly, Crisis 3 remains mostly held back by the graphics card, with just under a 10% improvement when using the Core i5. I think this comparison was the most interesting, as the Athlon really did put in a good showing. The only game that saw a substantial increase in performance was Metro, and considering that the Core i5 is well over double the price of the Athlon, it kind of makes it a hard sell. Now for the fun part, testing with the GTX 780. In Firestrike, the Core i5 is really able to stretch its legs, beating out the Athlon easily. With a 780, we finally see Battlefield 3 start to get a little bottlenecked, but even here both CPUs handle it on ultra settings at well over 60 frames per second. Metro continues to really enjoy having that extra processing power, delivering nearly double the performance with the Core i5. Meanwhile, Crisis 3 continues to absolutely destroy GPUs, so we see a smaller gain here with only about 25% more performance with the Core i5 compared to the Athlon. Overall, I'm impressed with how much you can get out of an $85 CPU. Now if you're building something very high-end, something maybe like a GTX 770 or a Radeon 7970, then it definitely does make sense to go with the Core i5. However, for a lot of builds, I can definitely see skipping the Core i5 instead going with the Athlon and using that money you saved to pick up an SSD or maybe a bit of a beefier graphics card. So what do you think? Is the Core i5 still the clear obvious choice or do you think the Athlon might have a place in your next build? Definitely be sure to let me know what you think in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, definitely be sure to subscribe to the channel so you're always notified anytime I post a new video. Anyway guys, I will catch you next time.